All right, this is my how to beat in a cross video. Yeah, second time I'm recording it, the first time I'm, I spent 10 minutes explaining their, the effects of the monsters, but I don't really have to explain them. There's only a couple ones to, to focus on, so we'll simplify it. Trishula is a typical one, they'll be summoned, they'll banish one card from your hand, field, or graveyard. So by reducing by basically playing uh, all your cards so that we have no cards in hand you could reduce the chances of this effect being able to be applied so that's one way of beating him then we have Ganir if they manage to summon Ganir in any effect they can negate this effect to pop a, to destroy a card on the field or by using monsters that can't be destroyed by card effects or if they would be destroyed by card effects you could just detach it will help you fight and beat this <clears throat> relatively easy you don't have to worry about this because all this really do does is causes you to tribute two monsters causes you, the player who uses to tribute two monsters either from their hand or side of field to draw two cards you could, send, you could just simply veil her that Right, for example, or just negate it with any negation effect, and um, they won't get to draw. So that way they don't have more, you know, that way they don't have hand advantage. Simple enough, right? Brionic, um, you can, all these effects can be negated. Um, I prefer, I recommend Skill Drain, of course, uh, because it doesn't target it, so it just blankets them. So that will just immediately shut them down. So you don't have to worry about them using. Uh, from right, it's Trishula. Yeah, Trishula makes it where if an across monster or monsters you control is targeted by a card or, or effect, you can discard the card and they get the activation. But that's only if the effect targets. So the idea is to not use that many targeting effects. Um, Brionic would bounce two monsters from your. That they're, they're, they're summon, there were special summon for the extra deck to the deck. But if you summon no monsters from your extra deck, you don't have to worry about that effect. Cataster, really, this has a really good effect by himself. He can destroy anything with special summon. Uh, and, yeah. And any special summon monster that was special summon for the extra deck. So if you exceed summon, synchro summon, fusion summon. This alone can, by effect, can destroy them. But if you have a monster that can't be destroyed by card effects like uh, Bilzy, the Diabolic Dragon, then Catastrophe's not that big of a deal, right? <coughs> you can use stuff like Mecha Equip Engineer to survive, you know, to defend against this. Uh, you can use Feral Grand Knight. So here's Feral Grand Knight. You can obviously, and there's Mecha Equip Engineer. Then we have the Necklace of the Unicorn. This essentially skill drains your uh, monsters that were special summoned from the extra deck. But if you negate his effect, obviously that wouldn't matter. This is kind of like your, uh, their, uh, what is it called? This is kind of like their breakthrough skill per se. Um, or Phoenix Chain, whichever way you look at it. Because it can target a monster that was summoned summon special summon from the extra deck. Reducing the attack to zero and negating its effect. So. And then, of course, their ritual spell cards. And then they got some support monsters here that you can use. Senju will get you a ritual monster. Uh, Manju to 10,000 hand will get you a ritual monster or a ritual spell card. And then, of course, the mighty Digen release your rituals, which will give your ritual monster a built in vanity's emptiness effect where your opponent can't special summon. Now, how to beat these, you know, how you can use cards to prevent them from summoning since you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Since six of the Necroft monsters are level six and higher. Ophion can prevent their summoning, but your, they can still summon Unicorn or Klaus Solus. 
but at least you can shut down a lot of their, their boss ones, a lot of their bigger ones, just by summoning Ofen if you have an Evil Sworn deck. Or we have a Light Sworn Engine. I mean, Evil Sworn Engine. Yeah, Evil Sworn Nightmare is good if you have a dark attribute deck like Grape Keepers. Um, Evil Swarms, you know, obviously. <laughs> uh, like uh, Infernities. You can exceed into this, and whenever they ritual summon one of their monsters, you can essentially book a moon their monster. Eddie, I think that one in the kitchen is full to take care of tonight because the trash is coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's full. Cool. Um, so, where is that? And, uh, you can use cards to, like, you can use Rhapsody and Berserk basically to remove some of the stuff from their graveyard. <laughs> Mainly their ritual spells, so that way they can't add it back to the hands for the effects of, uh, like, by the effects of the Cross Unicorn. Um, as well as get rid of any of the Necross monsters that they discarded for their discard effects, or the ones that you defeated. You can banish them with Rhapsody and Berserk, so that way they can't reuse them. You can also get rid of the gym releaser if they send it to the graveyard by Lavalvo Chain, Foolish Burial, or a Tour Guide, uh, Exceed Play. If you run the Inferno Arch type, you have the ability inherently in the deck to banish cards from the graveyard, so you can banish the ritual spells. The cough monsters themselves, the Dijen or Dijens. You can also use an Infernoid Anuku, as what he's called now in the CCD. You can use his effect to negate, you know, the ritual spell card. That way they can't ritual summon. <coughs> then you can use the effect of any of the other infernoids you might have on your side of the field to banish the ritual spell so that way they can't add it back with the effect of uh, a cross armor unicorn. And as you can see, all of them have the ability to activate the effects on either player's turn except for the level 3, level 2, I think the level 1 and the level 4 which I don't have listed here mainly because he has no effects that can directly affect the, the monsters like for example you have a 3000 here that can run over almost any of the necross monsters except for the size of armor which is a 3300 but it could take down pretty much any of the other ones. You have a 28, it could take down Trish and any of the other ones. You have Inferno and Bow. He can, uh, I think his name is Sat Satimus or something, Sat Satimus. He can, um, he can run over a Gunnier can't run him over his 29, can run over Brio, can run over Cataster, and any of the other two. And if somehow the monster manages not to be capable, not, can't, doesn't get destroyed by using Gunnear's effect, or they use Gunnear's effect to make it where the monster can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects, Good thing about uh, Inferno Ball is that af at the end of the battle phase, if this card attacked an opponent's monster, you can banish one card on the field. So you can banish the Necross monster that was protected by Gunnear's effect. So that's good to know. Um, 2200 is pretty decent. It can get over nothing. <laughs> that's funny. Alright, so. 
you essentially can't get over nothing. But if you're if your opponent still has a Senju Manju, you know, on the field, you can use Infernoid as Modi, you know, it's a effect that when you deal battle, uh, when you destroy, when you flick battle damage to your opponent by battling one of their monsters, you can uh, send one random card for your opponent's hand to the graveyard. So that's a good way of getting rid of any of those Necroft monsters they might still have or they have in their hands. So that way you can slowly pick at their hands to make it harder for them to ritual summon and make their plays. Um, if they manage to summon any of their good monsters onto any of their Necroft monsters in the field, you can use uh, Inferno Lucky Focus. Lucificus, I guess Lucy, <laughs> to destroy it, or you can bounce it back to the hand with Belzebub. <coughs> uh, Lu Lucy is a good one because you can destroy the monster, and then you know ritual monster, right? The cross monster. Then the opponent's turn tribute uh, Lucy to banish that cross monster. Especially if your opponent activates the effect of uh, Unicorn to try to add it back to their hand. You can chain, because these are quick effects. Tribute this monster and banish. Tsukuyumi. This effect does target, but in the, in the case that your opponent doesn't have uh, a Trishula in the hand, to counter the effect of uh, Tsukuyumi, you're able to put any of the Necross monsters face down, making them vulnerable to um, a Dark Hole, because Gunnir will only, you know, be useful if you could target a face up Necross monster. So by putting the monster face down, it makes it to where a lot of these effects are useless. And you could do stuff like Dark Hole, as you can see, there's Dark Hole. Regaki. These are generic. Most players main these already, so it's useful. I like Lightning Vortex, but hey, to each their own. Fusion is a good card. <laughs> and the usefulness of being able to Tsukuyumi is in case they use Dijin Releaser Rituals to summon any of the Necross monsters, you can use Tsukuyumi to essentially book a moon, any of these. And here's Book a Moon to put them face down so that way you can still special summon. And then a good combo is use Tsukuyumi, right? Uh, to put the Necross monster face down. And then, if you want, you could combo and creature swap and take control of the Necross monster and have it for whatever you want because, you know, spirit monsters during the end phase will return to the owner's hand and Tsukuyumi will go back to hand. So if you're running a spirit deck, you might already have this. If not, this is a good side deck card. Technically, it's a good main deck card, but hey, to use the own. It's pretty decent spellcaster decks. If you're rocking rock, um, tr um, rock stun, you're probably already playing Fossil Diana. It's decent just because it's a monster version of Vanity. It essentially gives you the effect of of Digital Release Room. Now we can use it that effect against your opponent who's playing the cross. To prevent them from being able to do stuff, be able to summon their bad boys. <clears throat> you get the same results, you know, using Vanny's emptiness, and of course, you know, Ophion, prevent them from specialing, or any other monster that prevents special summoning, like Creature Swapping, giving them an Acid Golem. <laughs> They'll be mad. That's the funny thing is, I should have put Acid Golem here. I'm going to pop him up right so you can see him if you don't really know what he is, which you should know who he is, but. There's the Mighty Acid Golem right there. You deserve a spot on that list. Creature swap him. Bang. Your opponent will be mad. And definitely want to creature swap him without material. You can... Uh, most Burning Abyss players do play creature swap or enemy controller. But creature swap is pretty good. Because you permanently get to keep the monster. And if you exceed into Acid Golem and creature swap. They have a 3000 that they're not going to be too happy with. It won't let them special summon. Um, <clears throat> and since they don't have no tribute monsters in their decks, inherently, they're not going to be able to tribute Acid Golem 
in order to get them off the field so they can, you know, summon their necros monsters. So right here, it's a real, real big trouble right here. Acid Golem and Creature Swamp, too generic, too many people have access to it. So you can easily use that to beat them. All right, Alec is good if you're running Burning Best because he's like essentially a, an effect better. The way you want to use him, the way I use him typically is that I use him with Mega Equip Engineer. Mega Equip is good because it has built in protection from being destroyed by Battle Card Effect, but also it, you know, you can activate the effect during your opponent's turn, so that allows you to activate the effect of any of the materials you might have. And I use Burning Abyss, so using Alec, you know, as my effect bailer, my Venus Chain, you know, or Breakthrough Skill, whichever way you want to look at it. It's useful for negating any of these Necrosis effects. This effect targets. So be careful with the, your point might have attrition in the hand. Baylor, pretty much the same thing. The only difference between, between Baylor and Alec is that Alec, if he sent to the graveyard during your turn, you'll get to apply the effect. While Baylor, you can only send it to the graveyard during your opponent's main phase. This can be activated, done during the battle phase, end phase, semi phase, draw phase, main phase, whatever. As long as he sent to the graveyard, that's when he'll do his effect. This could, it could even do his effect during damage step, you know what I mean? All the good stuff. And then we got Breakthrough Skill, you know, activated. Can't do it during da damage, but could do it any other time, Skill Drain. Can't do it during damage, but could do it during any other time. And it's a blanket effect, so just automatically will make a lot of the monsters effects useless. Not the, the hand trap effects, not the effects of discarding, but the summoning effects will be negated. Rain 17s will prevent them from summoning, obviously. Wing Wing Blast is good for um, defending yourself, you know, preventing them from at least the ritual monsters from staying on the field. <coughs> You know, and you just wing blast one of their ritual monsters back on top of the deck, so it'll slow them down from being able to make a lot of their best plays. Karma Cup will banish multiple copies. If they have a gun ear in the graveyard that they pitch earlier and then they summon a gun ear, then you can Karma Cut the gun ear and get rid of the other one in the grave, so that's useful. Regular Eker Break is generic enough to get rid of anything, any of the Necroz monsters, especially if you want to get rid of. Uh, Caster, <clears throat> get rid of Caster so that way he doesn't get rid of your uh, synchros, XYZs, fusion monsters. Necro Valley will prevent them from being able to use uh, Digen Releaser because Digen Releaser needs to be uh, banished in order to be used uh, for its effect to be reused <coughs> to give uh, any of the ritual monsters their ability. You know, of course, while it's in the grave, they tribute it from the hand to the graveyard. That's a totally different story. But if it's in the grave, you don't have to worry. Necro Valley won't allow that. As well as Necro Valley will prevent the effect of Unicorn being able to revive, retrieve anything from the graveyard, which is very useful to prevent them from doing that. Um, that's essentially all that will do. I already mentioned creatures are Book of Moon is useful just to help get rid of some of the blanket effects or some of the activate effects like stop him while he's on the field so he can't use his uh, uh, effect negating ability against you know your XYZ plays or synchro plays. Same for him. Put him phase down makes it easier to destroy him with a you know, monster effect or card effect, like Elu card or something like that. Same goes for any of these. And that's the end of the video. And I already mentioned Dark Hole and Regeki.